वेलकम माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज द लास्ट टॉपिक ऑफ द लास्ट मॉड्यूल ऑफ योर थर्ड सेम कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री केमिस्ट्री इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी लर्न अबाउट अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट क्लास ऑफ नेचुरल प्रोडक्ट्स दैट वॉज एल्कोलॉइड्स एंड टूडे इट इज टर्पिनॉइड्स वॉट आर टर्पिनॉइड्स बिफोर वी talk about terpenoids let us know what is mean by essential oils the volatile oils very light oils having pleasant odor which are isolated from various parts of plants like flower stem fruit leaves root etc and obtained by steam distillation they mainly contain terpenoid hydrocarbons and their oxygenated derivatives so terpenoids are the chemical constituents present in essential oils see we are very familiar with these examples in our daily life like lemon grass oil eucalyptus oil which we use for headaches sandalwood oil which is very much used in perfumery so these are essential oils so the important characteristics of essential oils are one that they have very pleasant odor smell and another thing is that they are obtained they are isolated from plants by the method called steam distillation so what are terpenoids the chemical constituents present in essential oils and they are a group of hydrocarbons with general formula c5h8 n times and their oxygenated derivatives like alcohol aldehyde ketone etc with characteristic present order and they are present in essential oils a few examples are shown there various plants fruits etc and terpenoids isolated from these plants and how they are isolated essential oils are isolated from plants by two methods either by steam distillation and also by solvent extraction or sometimes a combination of the two so what is steam distillation certain organic volatile compounds which can be distilled by passing steam through the juice of this plants that means if you want to isolate an essential oil from some leaves of a plant first you crush it in water make a juice and then from another flask you pass steam to the juice of this plant parts so that essential oils which are steam volatile will evaporate get distilled along with the steam and it is collected in another vessel where you get two layers one the aqueous layer and you will have a very very small amount of essential oil that is that will remain in water you can recover this essential oil by adding some suitable organic solvent like ether to which essential oil will get extracted and it can be separated so steam distillation and solvent extraction are used for isolating essential oil from plants actually this is an interesting area of phytochemistry research various valuable essential oils are isolated from rare plants which may have various medicinal properties now after you get essential oil it is to be separated into various terpenoids an essential oil may contain as many as hundreds of different terpenoids so it is done by either fractional distillation or by more effectively by chromatography now come regarding the structure of 
terpenoids there is an important rule called isoprene rule put forward by wallach it says that the skeletal structure of all natural terpenoids are built up of isoprene that is 2 methyl buta 13 diene units so what is isoprene 2 methyl buta 13 diene that is it is ch2 double bond c ch3 single bond ch double bond ch2 this is what is called isoprene commonly called isoprene iup's name is 2 methyl buta 13 diene it can be simply shown like this okay so if you look at the structure of any terpenoid you can see that it is made up of a number of isoprene units so that is what is isoprene rule now a modification to this rule came later that is known as special isoprene rule put forward by ingold which talks about how the isoprene units are connected in various terpenoids as we have seen iso isoprene can be shown simply like this right of course there are double bonds one here and okay this is not complete okay one here this is isoprene so simply we can show it like this this is the head and this is the tail of one unit so when two isoprene units get connected you can see that it is a head to tail combination the link is between head and tail you can see here it shown two units are connected head connected to tail this is special isoprene rule now coming to classification of terpenoids terpenoids are classified based on the number of isoprene units present monoterpenoid see that it contain two units maybe because for a head to tail link there should be minimum two isoprene units so terpenoid containing two units are called monoterpenoid naturally those containing four are called di six are called triterpenoid etc in between the odd number terpenoid con terpenoids containing odd number of isoprene units are named like this the primitive one terpenoid containing only one unit is called hemiterpenoid if it is three it is called sesquiterpenoid if there are five units it's called sesquiterpenoid etc now coming to uses of essential oil see that essential oils have plenty of applications as we have noted earlier at the beginning essential oils and terpenoids are characterized by their fragrance fragrance smell because of that they find use in skin care cosmetic products soap deodorant lotion etc used as insect repellent also they have medicinal properties so used in making analgesics and inflammatory medicines antiseptic for wounds and burns used in perfumes because of the fragrance used in making mouthwash toothpaste cup drops etc now we consider three specific examples selected examples for terpenoids number 1 citral as you can see it is a monoterpenoid two units are there c10h16o so it is not a hydrocarbon it is an oxygenated derivative of the terpenoid the source is lemon grass oil what we call pulthailam very in, uh, appealing fragrance it has look at the structure you can see that 
there are two units connected right here you can divide into two and there are two isoprene units and interestingly there are two isomers for this citral citral a and citral b citral a is also called geranial citral b is also called neural see the name encyl al because it it's aldehyde so we end up with al citral it's aldehyde so wh wh how it is citral a and citral b the geometrical isomers how it is distinguished you you might be knowing that geometrical isomers are two cis and trans and it is this double bond about which we can have two geometrical isomers we know in cis form we will have the top priority groups on the same side so this doubly bonded carbon here the group present are one is on the first carbon it is aldehyde and this there is h here even though it is not shown so between these two substituents aldehyde group has first priority so this is priority 1 right aldehyde is priority 1 now on the other doubly bonded carbon there is one methyl group this one and the other group is ch2 then it is going along ch2 like that so when you decide priority based on sip rule can in gold prolog rule which is basically based on the atomic weight this residual carbon that means this this ch2 group get first priority because it is ch2 connected to another carbon so that advantage is here but the other group is ch3 which is methyl where there are two hydrogen and one uh, there are three hydrogens but here it is two hydrogen and one carbon now if you look at the disposition of this first priority groups you can see with respect to double bond first priority groups are on opposite side right with respect to this double bond opposite sides so it is trans so citral a is the trans isomer it is also called geranial whereas here the first priority group that is aldehyde and this residual group ch2 group is on the same side so citral b is actually cis form right or it is also called citral b or neural so that's about the structure of citral is important now menthol again it's very familiar to you it is obtained from peppermint oil and it is essential ingredient of uh, chewing gum toothpaste etc you can see the mint and menthol the terpenoid isolated from peppermint oil it has a cyclic structure it is also a monoterpenoid containing two isoprene units and this is also an oxygenated derivative and it is an alcohol so naturally it's called menthol ending with oil both citral as well as menthol find a lot of applications similar to any other essential oils used in mouthwash toothpaste facial cream shaving cream in soaps cosmetics etc and finally we have the third specific example of terpenoid is natural rubber it is a polyterpenoid okay it contain because it you know it's a polymer and it contain a large number of isoprene units you know that natural rubber is obtained as a latex that is a colloidal dispersion of rubber particles in water and obtained from bark of rubber tree and the processing is it is diluted to 10 to 20% and then filtered and treated with formic acid or acetic acid and there are coagulants and it is coagulated you get soft white mass of rubber it is separated 
and it is rolled into sheets and smoked at 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. And this is the crude rubber. It is a crude rubber is uh, obtained is uh, obtained is soft, sticky and elastic. Not very good in the properties to be used as an elastomer. It is insoluble in water but soluble in ether. It is easily attacked by oxidizing agents because there is large number of double bonds present in natural rubber. And it has another defect that it has high water absorbing capacity. So to improve the property, okay before that, uh, looking at the structure of natural rubber, this is a monomer, uh, you know, monomer of natural rubber is as we have seen. It is isoprene because it is a polyisoprene. So this is the monomer. 2-methyl 1,3-butadiene. A number of such units undergo polymerizations. Right? This is another unit. So suppose when two units are combining, what happens is that the two double bonds get rearranged and double bond will be appearing okay that is a correction here in the structure you see the one tributadine is to be corrected see there are four carbons right this is one double bond one at position one and three it's here and this is two methyl one three butadiene i think there was a mistake in pre previous slide you overlooked that so two units when get connected here what happens is that the two double bonds will get broken and new double bond will appear in the middle and here also these bonds will be broken instead and that will be used to form the linkage here like this so this will be repeated so that is why you are getting this kind of representation for the polymer okay so we can represent the polymer like this double bond will come in the middle now CH and okay let me rewrite it CH2 the single bond because that bond is broken and it come in the middle now There is CH3 here. Okay. This is CH3. Then this double body is here. CH single bond. CH2 and a polymer we represent like this we put a bracket and put N so it is an elastomer it's a linear polymer uh, and you know uh, rubber is elastic it has elastic properties but the natural rubber is having a lot of defects as we mentioned earlier to improve the properties what is done the process called vulcanization that is process by which a network of sulfur crosslinks are introduced in natural rubber to improve its properties by heating it with a small quantity of sulfur at 142. This is to be corrected. See the temperature is. It is 110 to 140 only. 40 degrees Celsius. In presence of 
certain chemicals which are called accelerators so that cross links appear so natural number is heated with calculated quantity of sulfur so what happens see this sulfur chains the sulfur chains get cross linked these are the sulfur chains and cross links appear due to sulfur like this okay so when cross links comes then there will be restricted movement and elasticity will improve it will retract once the deforming force is released you know that is perfect elasticity so vulcanized rubber has a lot of advantages over this natural rubber it is more elastic it has less water absorbing capacity it is not easily attacked by oxidizing agent it has more tensile strength mechanical strength etc and it will have less wear and tear so a lot of advantages for vulcanized rubber okay so that's all about terpenoids we come to an end of our portions in third sum complementary chemistry thank you all